Bibles today to Colossians 1.25. Colossians 1.25 will be kind of the main text for this message. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Got a couple interesting words here in this portion of scripture. Um, unless you've studied theology, you've probably not really heard dispensation. It's not something that we use a whole lot in common English. Maybe in the Queen's English, but I haven't been around a bunch of my buddies and they're like, you know what? I've been given a dispensation. It's just not something I say. But this is what Paul is saying here. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. This word dispensation, it's from a Greek word, and I'm going to butcher this, but um, this is the best way I figured to pronounce it. O con o e a. And it means a, how, uh, an administration of a household or an estate. Specifically, a religious economy. It is a dispensation or it is a stewardship. A stewardship to be over something. To be over a household or an estate. To be a manager, if you would. And then he says, wherefore, I am made a minister. And Paul was made a minister. And kind of in our American brains, uh, the minister sounds like a, you know, prestigious position. A minister, it sounds big. We might even call them reverends or whatever. But this is what the Greek word means. The word minister, it means this, to run an errand, to be an errand boy, to be an attendant, like the person that takes your tickets at the bus station, to be a waiter, to be this person that waits your tables at a uh, restaurant. And here's the other thing, to do other menial things. Duties. That's what a minister is. It's not the guy in the suit, which I rarely ever wear a suit. But it's to run an errand, to be an errand boy, to be an attendant, to be a waiter, to be someone that is a laborer, to be the gopher, go for this, go for that type person. And then Paul goes into, according to the dispensation of God, or if this was by God's plan, his administration, his stewardship program for Paul. So as we've looked at this and as far as being in a stewardship or a dispensation, as we all have something we are steward over, there's a dispensation of God for each individual believer. And you are that waiter or minister or Aaron boy, or Aaron girl, in that calling. What dispensation are you in? What are you a minister of? What do you attend to? What are you the waiter of? What has God put you steward over? What is your calling? And then I guess we have to ask another question. What if you're unsure? Maybe you're in that spot, God, I don't know what you've put me over. Proverbs 16, 3 says, this, commit, your, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. It's great. We don't really have to know what our calling is. If we follow God, it'll be made clear to us. He will lead, guide, and direct us even if we don't know what we are made steward over. What is our calling? It's not something we have to mull over or 
sit and wonder and wonder, am I doing the right thing? Am I called to do this or that? Follow the Lord and your ways will be established. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Very simple. We just seek the Lord, follow the Lord, commit our work to the Lord and these things are made clear to us. But you know, as we read, read this from Paul and we've read over these things, there's also another thing, more than just our calling, that we are made a steward over. And those are the blessings in our lives. There are blessings in your life. And you are made a steward over the good things that God brings into your life. When there are good things brought into your life, you're to be responsible. And you're to use those things. Let's look at this in the stewardship of blessings. James 1.17, and I'm reading from a paraphrase here. Every good present or gift, every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father who made the sun, the moon, and stars. The Father doesn't change like the shifting shadow, shadows produced by the sun and the moon. So every good thing in your life if you get up in the morning and you jump into your beat up old car and you drive to work, that is a blessing because you did not have to walk to work that morning. And I work over in Florence. Mike works over Walton. Hebron. Those are long walks. <laughs> and we woke up. Absolutely. John 3.27. John answered, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. Anything that you've received that is a blessing has been given to you from God. It was bestowed to you from heaven. You know, we have to acknowledge that every good thing in life, every gift, every blessing is from God. And with these gifts, we are placed a steward over these blessings. As, and this is like what it was from the beginning. Genesis 1.31, all the way back in the front of your Bible. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, there was morning, the sixth day. And if we skip down to Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took man and put him in the garden and worked and kept it. He made a beautiful, perfect world. And he put man in there to bless him. To bless him. And he made man the steward over the attendant, the waiter, over the blessing that he had made. Genesis 1.26 Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish, the sea, the birds of heaven, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth. God created a good world with a beautiful garden and a man placed in it to tend to it, to be the waiter, to be the errand boy, to be the steward over the garden. Stewardship is not a result from the fall. It was God's original plan for mankind that we would be good stewards. So what are the good things in your life? What are these things that you've been blessed with that you are a steward over? Take a minute and reflect upon what are those good things in life. Have you been given a talent? Have you been able to minister to other people. What good things has God brought into your life? And then, what are you doing with these blessings? Are you being a good steward of the blessings that God brings to you? And what if you're a good steward? If you're a good steward over the things that God gives you, 
Let's look at 2 Corinthians 9, 6. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. When we are a good steward of the blessings that God has brought into our life, we can expect these things to reap bountifully, to grow. Malachi 3.10 Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to, rep to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. When we are a good steward of God's blessings, we put him to the test to bless us more. Bless us more. My beat up old car with 14 dings, I might be blessed with one with 13 dings. I can expect blessings in my life. Luke 12, 43. The servant will be blessed if his master finds him doing this job when he comes. I can guarantee this truth. He will put that servant in charge of all his property. When God blesses you with things and we are a good steward, we can expect that God will put us in charge of more things. He'll provide more blessings in our lives for us to be steward over. Luke 6.38 Given it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will pour into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And the idea here is that when we give handfuls to God, when we give our handfuls to God, God gives His handfuls back to us. And God's hands, guess what, are bigger than our hands. So when we give him our little handfuls, kind of like if Teddy was up here and was giving me a handful of his candy, and I gave him handfuls of my candy back, my handfuls are bigger than Teddy's. That's how God works with us. When we give these things to him, he gives back to us in his handfuls. Now, we've looked at what if we're a good steward. So that leads us to what do we do next? What if we are a bad steward with the things that God has given us? What if we're a bad steward? Luke 16.10 The one who is faithful in a very little will also be faithful in much. And the one who is dishonest in a very little will also be dishonest in much. We can expect our blessings to shrink if we're a bad steward with the good things that God brings in our lives. Luke 16, 11, And if you have not been faithful in the, right, un, in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust you with true riches? And this is really for our protection, especially when we're talking money. If you mismanage your money, don't expect God to bless you with more because God knows that if you squandered 10 bucks, what would you do with 100? What would you do with 1,000? What would you do with a million dollars? It'll be squandered. People win the lottery and end up two years later dead broke worse than they were before they won the lottery. And God knows this. This is his principle that he's laid. If we are not faithful with the small blessings, we cannot expect God to trust us with the larger blessings. Proverbs 21.20 Precious treasure and oil are in the wise man's dwelling, but the foolish man devours it. Are we just the person that wants more and more and more and more? Are we in devouring? Are we saving back to be a good steward? To see that we are using, whether it's our money, 
what, and if you don't have money, look like, I don't have money. Is it whatever else that God has brought into your life? Are you being a good steward of it? Are you holding back that it's not being just devoured and gone? Now, what does God expect of your stewardship program? Those things that you are made administer over, a waiter over, those good things that he's brought into your life, what does he expect of those blessings in your life? And as I, was, as I was reading through these scriptures concerning stewardship, I really broke these down into a few different areas. God expects of your stewardship of your blessings, those things that you are made minister over, He expects you to serve others. Serve others. 1 Peter 4.10, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. 2 Corinthians 8.1, We want you to know, brothers, that we want you to know brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia for in the severest test of affliction. Their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty has overflowed into a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means and their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this is not what we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. If you're unfamiliar with what Paul is writing about here, the church in Jerusalem was under much attack. They were very, very poor. They were living in a commune because they could not afford to survive any other way. That's really why in second chapter of Acts, why they were living together and had one person. They were, they were poor. Here you've got a small group of Jews. They're outcast by their people, living in Roman-controlled area that the Romans didn't like them. And they were starving. And Peter, as he was talking to Paul, told him, you know, go out, preach to the Gentiles, but please remember the poor. Paul, Peter's in Jerusalem. Remember the poor here. Please remember the poor. So Paul takes up a, a collection to take back to Jerusalem. And here's the Macedonians. They're poor people. They don't have any money either. They're probably a little bit better off than the Jews under or the uh, church in Jerusalem under persecution but by no means was this a wealthy place. And even in their poverty, they gave everything they had to support their brothers and sisters in Christ in Jerusalem. They gave out of their poverty into wealth. And this is what God expects from us. That we use even the little merely blessings that we may seem we have to use it for the brethren, to serve others. Matthew 10, 8, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Do it out of a heart not to gain money from this. It's not a blessing to go over to help an elderly person fix something on their house and then charge them for it if your gift or talent is construction or, or whatever. But do it without paying because you were blessed by God without paying. Give without pay. Serve God is number two. What are you to do with your blessings that you're made steward of? Serve God. Colossians 3.23 Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Whatever you do, you're doing it unto God. Whatever your job is, you're doing it unto the Lord because if you have a job, 
It's a blessing. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. You were bought with a price. Serve God with those blessings that He's given you. 1 Timothy 6.17 As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly provides us everything to enjoy. See these blessings that come into your life as blessings from God. But don't wrap yourself up in those. Serve the Lord with them. Because money, it's here today, gone tomorrow. Your health, here today, gone tomorrow. But your relationship with the Lord is eternal. And in your blessings, here's number three. Be content. Be content with your blessings. If you're blessed with a beat up old car, with a lot of miles, and you're able to get back and forth to work, be content with that. Don't ask for the Lamborghini. You could ask. But if you're not a steward over that beautiful car, I can, I can pretty much guarantee Lamborghini ain't coming. You take care of that old car and are thankful for it, you still might not get the Lamborghini. You might get a Camaro. Be content. 1 Timothy 6.6 6. But godly with, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of this world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire the, to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. And you know, to be content, many times it can be very hard for us to understand. Coming into a lot of money can be almost more of a trial than having no money. Because also with having money comes accountability. Having money can make us desire things of the world. They can lead us, it can lead us astray many times. And can lead us to a snare, temptation, and even bring ruin and destruction. I mean, we came into this world naked and with nothing. And like my mom said, she could take me out at any time. But if we have food and clothes, be content. Proverbs 13, 11, Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Be content. When you get a little, save a little. Let it increase slowly in your life. You'll be content with what you have when it's gained slowly. And it won't dwindle in a hurry, like money gained hastily. Haggai 1.5 Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You, have eat, you eat, but you never have enough. You drink and you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earned wages does so to put them into bags with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Be content and consider your ways. Are you chasing after more money? And when you get more money, you put them in your pockets and you find that your pockets have holes. It's like no matter how much more money you make, the more you spend. I don't think I've ever, after every raise, I don't think I've really truly 
felt the rays. It seemed like it's gone. It's gone. But if we are content, when we eat, we'll be content and we won't be hungry then. But if we're not, no matter how much you eat, you're going to still be hungry. No matter how much you drink, you'll still be thirsty. You'll never have your fill. And then the last thing is remember God for your blessings. When you have blessings, remember where these blessings came from. Remember the Lord. Deuteronomy 8, 18, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your father in this day. Honor the Lord, Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of all your produce. Do we remember God when we have blessings in our lives? Do we offer back to him our first fruits? Do we give to the Lord first? Do we acknowledge that he swore to our fathers blessings? And when he gives us wealth, do we acknowledge that where that came from? Leviticus 20, 30, every tithe of the land, whether uh, of seed or of the land or fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Holy unto the Lord. Do we acknowledge that the first thing of everything we've made is holy or set apart to God? It's His whether we give it back to Him or not. You know, part of the thing of if we're a bad steward, we lose it. Guess what? We'll lose it. God will take it back if we're not a good steward with us. And this is everything. I mean, this isn't, and I'm not speaking about tithing to the church or whatever. We're in the new covenant. It's not just 10%. It's everything you have you use to serve the Lord. You use to serve the Lord. And what he's called to you to drop into the box in the back, that's between you and God. I could care less. Where God guides, God provides. If we're to have a new building, the building will happen over here. We didn't, we didn't build this building here. You know, Carl, my dad, they came here as little kids. And we just heard down the road from Mr. Fetters that, you know, we rarely had talked to at that point. Stopped down, talked to Bill. Dad and I came up here, talked to Winston and Carl. Brother Murphy passed away, and you know what? They didn't know what they were gonna do. God provided this for us to come to. We didn't ask for it. We didn't build it. Everything is God's. But we have to be a good steward of it because it is a blessing that God has brought into our lives. And we are called to be a good steward. As we close, you know, if you studied theology, you may have come across what's called dispensationalism. And we use that word dispensation at the beginning of our message. And this is the belief that God has dealt in different economies throughout history with people's different administrations. And this is true. You know, dispensationalism, you know, can be somewhat a high level theology for, for some, but it really comes down to the simpleness of God has called us to a stewardship program because that's what dispensation means it's a stewardship program and whether we break up the world into seven dispen or the timeline into seven dispensations or whatever it really is about what has God placed you steward over what is your dispensation what is your dispensation you know we've been made stewards as of the gospel. If you're a believer, you are made a steward of the blessing of receiving the gospel. Receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Share the gospel. You are a steward over that. Well, let's remember that God gives us blessings. And these blessings come in the perfect season. 
the perfect season for our lives. If you have too rainy of a summer time, your crops don't grow. And rain was, in, in biblical times, was sought of as blessings. But if it floods your crops, it's no longer a blessing. Our blessings have to come in the correct seasons. And we look forward to our blessings to be given to us in the correct seasons. And we are made stewards over these blessings. With your blessings, I'd ask, I, I, I ask myself, and I'd ask you to ask yourself of these blessings that God has brought into your life. Are you serving others with these blessings? Are you being a good steward with your blessings by being a blessing to others? Are you serving God with these blessings in your life? And then are you content with the blessings that God has brought in your life? And do you remember that it is God who has given you these blessings to be a minister, an administrator? A errand boy, a waiter, over.